Today on Rodder's Garage, it's time for some floor pans in the old 28 Model A Coupe. That's right, after a busy summer of working on customer cars, I finally got a little bit more time to get back on the Yard Art Model A. And this video is all about floor pans. So, with normal Rodder's Garage video editing standards, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one the same. I'm gonna explain to you guys what I'm gonna do here, a couple of quick things, and then we're just gonna breeze through this and get all the new floor pans hammered in this thing. All right, so first things first, we're gonna start off here in the back. One thing I'm really surprised no one called me out on for when I patched up my quarter panels on this thing about a year ago at this point now is the fact that the frame rail is actually sticking out beyond the body. I probably should have did a little more research on that before I welded everything solid and after looking at some pictures and a couple of other cars in person, this isn't supposed to be like this. And I actually had to come in here and trim the bottom of my wheel arch basically the lip off the bottom here to fit over this frame rail because it was hitting it. Now, what I ended up screwing up here um, way back when I did this was basically all this stuff was gone. As you guys know, it was rotted all the way up to here. Same thing on the bottom of the car here. This body line where it comes down like this, this bump out or this angle was actually what was supposed to get this sheet metal out beyond this. Now what I probably ended up doing was when I framed the floors, I'm probably a little skinny on the body, probably about an inch too skinny or it tapers to the back, even though the uh, rear tail pan is actually the correct width on this thing. One way or another, I got the thing a little bit too skinny at this point, but the door is closed, everything looks right, everything fits right. I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. Yeah, basically what I'm gonna do, instead of cutting all my tacks loose on the inside here and stretching things out and making a whole bunch of unnecessary work, is I'm gonna go ahead and cheat and cut off basically the end of the rail, basically the end of this cross member on the outside. Now there's really no problem with doing that. The only reason that I would ever need that piece sticking out anywhere beyond the actual frame rail, uh, frame rail going forward is the fact that the original body mounting location was out there basically in the same place where these holes are out here and i'm gonna get rid of those for a couple of reasons number one i really didn't like the way i did it i actually drilled straight through my spacer down here and it would have been a bolt all the way through with a nut on the bottom side which is actually right over the buggy spring and that was stupid what i really should have done was this I should have made a couple of these and threaded them just like I did these for half inch bolts and the bolt should have just ran into basically the standoff and the standoff could have been welded to the frame. So that's why I made some new ones and these ones are gonna get placed inboard. I'm gonna have to check out the bumper brackets and see, actually I don't have bumper brackets for this car, they were destroyed, but I got another Model A in the front room. I wanna try to strategically place these in a place where I can still run the bumper brackets if I want. They get bolted here, here, and in one of these holes up here, I can't remember which. So, basically first thing is, I'm gonna whack off the ends of those frame rails so the body doesn't have that notch in it. I can get all that cleared up. Move these inboard, get these standoffs put here, and put one more piece of tubing in for the rear, most rearward body mounting bolts. After that mess gets all taken care of, the rest of the stuff is pretty simple. Up here in the front, I'm gonna make some plates either on a 14 gauge or eighth inch. For this section here, same on this side over here, basically this open area, those plates will get welded off to the floor structure, stitched to the sheet metal on the outside and welded heavily to the pillars up here. Basically just for more strength to finish tying the body off to the floor structure. That way, once I do my sheet metal floor pans out of 18 gauge, I can lay those out pretty much stopping about a quarter inch somewhere in that realm from the actual body sheet metal and then that stuff will get seam sealed afterwards on the actual tin for the full floor pan. I'm going to repeat the same process up here in the corners on the front pillars. After that's all done I need to finish off my floor structure basically from this point where I ended it. Get that finished off, brought up to the firewall, tucked in here, all welded up and finished off in the front. At that point, I can go ahead and I need to put the bell housing and the transmission back in this thing. I could put a whole engine in it. I don't have the Yard Arts original engine, but at this point, and I'm gonna have to make a video on some of this stuff because I've got more engine stuff to talk about. I do have another running Model A engine out of a 32 coupe. That's right, A engine out of a Deuce coupe. I'll talk to you guys about that one in the future. That did come out of a 32, but it is an A block sitting next to that 
You got a B block. So we got some engine stuff to talk about, but I could set the whole engine in the car, but I really don't need the engine for floor fitting purposes. What I need is the bell housing bolted into the car on the rear mounts, and I need the transmission on it because I wanna frame out with some lighter gauge tubing. I probably won't use the inch and a half by one, do some five eighths by five eighths or half by half or something, and frame out up around the perimeter of the shifter tower so when I lay all my floor pans in here, I can have a removable cap by the shifter so I can pop a panel on the floor, get to the bolts, pull the shifter tower off the trans if I ever want to install or remove the transmission or engine in one piece. So basically I need an access hole which needs to be framed out up there before finishing off the sheet metal. So yeah, that's it. Uh, that's pretty much the rundown of what's going to happen here. After all that framing and all this stuff I just talked about gets done, it'll be time to cut out and bead roll some 18 gauge floor pans for this thing. And before I lay the floor pans in, one more thing you're, you're gonna notice is I'm going to paint, right before welding the floor pans down, I'm going to paint just the top of the floor structure and the bottom of the pans anywhere where things get sandwiched together way back when i put the body on you'll even remember possibly that i painted the bottom of the car and the top of the rail where anything got sandwiched just to give it protective coating on the inside so yeah after the floor structure is done i'll paint everything get the floor pans in do a serious amount of welding and grinding on them and then then i should have some floor pans let's get started
All right, guys, so last night I got all my welding finished on my plates to connect the body off to the framing up here in the front. Everything's ground down and ready to start having floor pans laid over it. As you also saw, I went ahead and put the motor mounts on the chassis with the brand new rubber pads and then put the bell housing in, which was kind of a pain without the weight of the engine on it and with the new rubber there, usually they're pretty snug fitting. So I ended up standing inside the bell housing at the end to get a little more weight on it and whacking that thing into place with a dead blow hammer got the transmission bolted to it with four bolts after that and now i have everything up here i need to design the rest of my floor framing because i know where everything is now specifically the shifter tower also went ahead and threw the pedals on over here because when designing the floor framing and the tow board for up here in the front i kind of need those to kind of figure out what angle everything is supposed to be at there so pretty much ready to finish off the framing in the front here and start making some floor pans. Also this morning, I went ahead and wire wheeled all the rust out of the back pan over here because of that leaking chimney dripping down in there, which by the way, I did fix that about two weeks ago. So hopefully no more water comes down on it. Um, yeah, wire wheeled all the rust out of that crack. Got a coat of Rust-Oleum flat black in there already too. Figured I might as well do that right away so that dries by the time it's time for floor pans. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and finish framing this front section out here and we'll start cutting up some 18 gauge sheet metal. Let's go.
All right, guys, well, at this point, I am nearing completion on the floor pans here in the Yard Art Model A. Everything is welded down. All the welds are ground off. Toe board, it just got finished up. I fit everything uh, pretty nice here into where the factory piece of wood would have went up here in the firewall. I do have to drill some holes yet. There's a nut over here a nut insert over here on this piece same on that side and two up here i'm going to mark those out from the bottom side and drill up and then run one two three four quarter inch bolts down through the upper edges here to finish securing that thing off here in the future but for now it can stay the way it is i've got some of those self-tapping screws down here along the bottom the same way i mounted the cross member cover back here in the trunk um kind of did the same thing fit that on here did the Phillips screws drilled into the cross members. All of these screws are inside cross members, so none of them stick down visibly underneath the car. Also had a notch out on the sides here, a little bit for the body mounting bolts, one on each side. That turned out pretty nice. Um, I like the way that looks here in the trunk. It could have been about a half inch shorter. I went a little bit, a little bit too tall, not a big deal. Um, and really making it removable. Um, there's no reason for it. I could have welded that right into the floor pan system. The only reason you would ever have to remove that is if you wanted to take the U-bolts off the rear cross member without removing the body, but really, that's probably never going to happen. I just chose to make it removable. I think it turned out great like that. So, everything's finished up from there all the way up to the front, tow boards in, and at this point in time, I got two things left to do. That is make the shifter or the transmission cover or shifter tower area and the battery cover. This over here is where the battery goes in these. I need to make that cover and this cover. I'm gonna put a little bit of a bead roll in them. And that's gonna pretty much wrap up all the floor pan installation here. One thing I do have to do in the future yet is I'm going to weld the pan all the way across the rocker, basically, if you wanna call that this on these cars. I'm gonna weld this all the way across, jam to jam, and buff all that off with the grinder and make it flow as one piece and not have a seam here. The reason I didn't do them yet and the reason I'm not going to do them in this video is because this rocker, actually fits this door really nice. The other side has a big gap in the back and I think basically it's punted in on the bottom side. It's kind of folded under. I'm gonna save that for another time. So yeah, gonna jump onto these last two covers and that's gonna finish up the floor pans here. I am going to measure those out real quick, make a few marks, just quickly do it and get it over with and I'm gonna run back to the plasma table. I fired up the light in the back room. Because I had the plasma table on earlier, I'm just gonna go ahead and blow those two panels out on the plasma table clean them up, bead roll them, put a few screws in them, and that's gonna complete this thing. Let's finish it up. Nine and five eighths by 12 and a half. So that pretty much wraps up the floor pan installation in the Yard Art Model A. Finished up the other night getting that cover made for over the transmission here. Got everything piloted with a drill bit as you saw. I got my self tappers holding everything down. The tow board, the battery tray cover over here and this shifter or transmission cover here. I did snap one screw off on this side I'll have to remove and I ran short here on the back side. I'll have to get more of these Phillips 
flat headed self tapping screws, but that's it. Everything is now complete. Everything's ground down. The gaps turned out great out here on the side. One little bead of seam sealer all the way around and this thing's gonna be ready for paint. Only thing left, like I had said before, is welding off the floor pans to the rockers out here. So this is a nice, nice smooth edge when it's all wrapped up. But like I said, the other side over there, it's bent a little bit. If I close this door and we look down in here, you're gonna see there's a little bit of a gap on that back corner there. I know it's dark, but little tiny gap on this side, nothing much to speak of. I could actually probably leave that like that. But on the driver's side, if I push the door shut and we look down in here, you're gonna see there's quite the large gap here and a little bit of a bend right there. So I'm gonna wait on welding those floor pans until I do some finishing work on the body. There's some random pinholes, a few things to fix some dents to pull out yet. We'll do that in another video where I finish welding the floor pans off to the rockers and I will probably try to pull that rocker out to match the door while welding on it. That way I can get some heat in from the weld to assist in forming that rocker back into shape. So that's gonna be it for this video. Next video is gonna be deck lid, which luckily enough, I had just enough material left out of that four by 10 sheet of 18 gauge to wrap up the deck lid. I should have enough there to make the skin and probably enough material left to make some new drip rails or gutters on the sides of the body for the deck lid to actually sit in and for the water to run down because all that stuff is missing out of here. So next video's deck lid. Thanks for watching guys, appreciate it. Till next time.